Okay, I might be streaming now. I'm not sure. Let's see. For anyone who happens to catch this stream right as it is starting, um, I'll be getting started momentarily. I'm just doing a bit of setup, and I'm going to post the link in Discord, and then we'll get started. I can't see chat yet either. I'm getting that set up in OBS currently. I had to start the stream to get the link for the chat, but it should be easier for me to see the chat and keep track of uh, what's going on in OBS this time around as well. Okay. All right. Well, I did not put the chat window in. Hmm. Just a moment, everyone. I tried to get the chat link to get that into a custom doc in OBS, and it gave me the actual watch page. So I won't worry about that. I'll just read chat the normal way, and I'm going to go ahead and share the link for this stream, and then we'll get started. Okay. All right. Hi, guys. And let's get started. So, 
if any of you who are watching now caught the previous stream, well, either of the previous streams, a lot of the focus in those streams uh, was um, getting actual animations into motion match. And we don't have all the coverage we want yet for forward facing. So to answer your question, no, 5.4 is not out yet, but the preview is. And that's what I'm working out of right now. So there's the, the first preview of 5.4 is out, but it's not the full production ready release. So you can get the preview version from the Epic Games launcher um, and start working in it. And that is what I'm doing uh, in this stream series. So we have a fair amount of coverage for jogging and forward facing, but we're still missing snaking and 180 degree pivots as well as 180 degree starts it's playing 135 degree starts right here which is introducing some extra foot sliding but doesn't look too terrible and finally we are missing any sort of spins or back foot pivots which would be really useful to have for quite a few different angles and to get that sort of spinning functionality i would like to be able to define a turn direction for the AI controller that generates uh, trajectories along splines. For those of you who haven't been following along, I'm using a tool called Mojin that allows me to generate animations um, by inputting root motion trajectories. It's like a machine learning software. Um, I believe it's free to access for, I want to say, generating 10 second animations um so i do have access to an extended generation time window which i'm making use of for the animations that i'm using in this project oh it is quite laggy okay let me take a look at that i should be able to get that all sorted out in obs uh, let's see well i'm getting about twelve thousand kilobits per second upload rate and i haven't dropped any frames so let me know if um you continue to encounter any lag it might be on your end unfortunately but i'll keep an eye on that my bit rate could have been lower um earlier i'm not sure how long it's been since you sent the message okay so so here's just a, a quick preview of how this is all kind of working. So if I hit simulate, we can see that all these characters start to follow these splines. And what I'll do is I'll just use the take recorder to record the movement of these actors. And I can then take that, convert it to the proper format to put into Mojin and use the movement as the animated root bone that the animations are generated on top of. If I grab an animation right here, we can see an example generation, which is a 135 degree turn. Actually it might be, okay, it's 157.5 degree turn. I went a bit overboard with the amount of angular coverage. It's a 16 directional instead of eight directional. So we'll probably cut some of that out later on. I don't think it's all super necessary. All right. So in this stream, my goal is going to be to hopefully finish the spline follow AI controller. It's definitely not going to be a general purpose spline following controller, but I do want to add in the rest of the functionality that's missing, which really at this point I think is just the capacity to define the turn direction, because right now it just uses the normal orient rotation to direction or orient rotation to movement, my bad. And so that, uh, I think, um, so that will always find the shortest turn angle distance. And in some cases, we want to take a longer distance because if we're moving with a lot of momentum and we make a hard turn, it might be easier to do a back foot spin, which is going to be turning 
if it's 135 degrees, it's really going to be, um, yeah, that's going to be the shorter turn, um, actually, but it's going to be against our direction of velocity. So I misspoke there or wasn't thinking of things correctly in my head. Orient rotation to movement doesn't take the shortest turn distance. It takes whatever is closest, more closely aligned with the velocity of the character. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the AI controller right now and quickly give you guys an overview. I did do a more in-depth overview in a previous stream, so I'm not going to go super in-depth on how all of this logic works, but I am going to touch on the overall framework here because I need to give myself a bit of a reminder too before I hop in. It's been at least three weeks, maybe a month, since I last uh, iterated on this AI controller gear. So most of everything happens off of event tick, but we do get some initial data um, from the on possess event. Which is just the character um, that the AI controller is controlling and the character, um, has a variable exposed that's instance editable to set the motion spline that it follows. And then the motion spline holds settings for how it is followed. So let's see right here. I can choose whether or not we want to orient rotate rotation to movement, for example. So I would like to add an additional setting onto this struct and essentially create my own uh, rotation manager inside the AI controller to manually set control rotation instead of letting the character movements component do it. So I believe this is in the motion spline follow settings struct and I will be making I will be including all of this in the tutorial series I do on motion matching. So I will show you guys everything about this system and how you can set something just like it up in Unreal Engine yourselves. I'm going to make this a Boolean. And I think I'll name it Hughes Shortest ROT, which would be short for rotation. Now, back in the AI controller, off of event tech, the first thing we do from a sequence here is to check if this character has been initialized. And this variable gets set to true when the character has finished pulling all the movement settings from the spline and using them to update the corresponding settings in the character movement component. And if this is initialized, we set the motion spline from the character that we're following so that we can sample it as necessary in our spline following logic. And then we get the spline data from the character. Which, uh, let's see, I need to remind myself what this contains. All right, so this contains an interpolation speed for the input to the error radius while following the spine. Whether or not it should resample the spline along the curve, if it's a curved spline, or just set the next spline point as the target to move towards a delay time, if we want a delay at each point in the spline, and now our new use shortest rotation. So what we need to do is open up our motion spline character blueprints, and here's where we're setting those character movement component variables. Because currently, we just set orient rotation to movement based on our orient rotation to movement from our motion splines follow settings. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get, I'm sorry, our motion spline movement settings or whatever that struct is named. I could maybe uh, revise the names to make that a bit more clear. I'm not currently using blend spaces with this system. We can take a look at the current database. It is not correctly named. I need to fix that because it was a database to test spiral animations and I just kept chucking all the other animations into it. And the ground locomotion is actually the outdated one. But because I'm using AI generated animations, I can't precisely control the relative foot placement in the animations, which makes blending them effectively in blend spaces difficult. 
I do plan to try that out, but currently I'm just getting a lot of coverage and using uh, orientation warping to make up for the gaps in between these angles. I do want to try blend spaces with this approach, but I have not tested that yet. And that's going to be something to test out once we have finished getting all of our coverage. And that would work well, but it might require more editing of the animations than I want to do for this project. Okay, so this is a bit jumbled with uh, so many connections here, but um, okay, so we're going to grab what we're setting our orient rotation and movement with, and I'm just going to get an and node, and I'll plug our... Orient rotation to movement into our AND node. And I'll get a NOT Boolean node and plug this in. So now We won't be setting orient rotation to movement if motion, or I'm sorry, uh, use shortest rotation is set to true. I'm not sure at the moment what uh, use control desired rotation, what that should be. Uh, we'll figure that out through trial and error. It can only be one of two things. And then we might, uh, I might uh, condense some of these booleans down into a single one. They might not all be necessary. So now we have our spline following logic here. And essentially, the gist of this is that we find the direction from our current point along the spline and a point along the spline at some distant step ahead of where we're at. We get the directional unit vector between those two points and use that to add movement input. So if we have like an impossibly tight turn, the character is not going to be able to make that turn, which means we are using the movement model of the character movement component and can match our animations exactly to the acceleration, ground friction, and braking distance, all that stuff, the rotation rate, everything we've set in our character movement component, the animations can match perfectly, which is great for motion matching. Yep, I'm looking forward to the Motorik Emojin plugin to update for 5.4 as well, because it is a little bit tedious to export to Blender um, and then back into the web interface for Mojin. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, that might make things a bit easier. I have not actually used the Unreal Engine plugin yet. So let's see now. Hmm. So this is handling our location, our input vector, but we need to now also handle our rotation. So I think once we have our input, I think that's all we need to figure our rotation out. So I'm going to get a sequence here. First we're going to add movement input and then we're going to set our control rotation yaw. And we need to calculate the yaw we need for the current frame while taking delta time into account. So we can get the rotation between two vectors and that's what I'm going to do first. We have a reference to our character. So I will get the actor rotation. And from that rotation, I can get the forward vector. So now we have two vectors and we should just be able to get look at rotation. Let 
But before I pass these variables or these vectors in, I'm going to normalize them to two dimensions so that we're not taking the Z axis into account. That should um, ensure that this rotator only has yaw. So now we have the difference between our input rotation. Okay, so now here's our first issue. We have the look at rotation. Or no, this should be the shortest rotation, I believe. And this is what we're looking for currently. And there may be situations where we want to take the longest rotation, even when we're only making a short turn. So we'll, there will be some experimentation here to figure out what is going to induce spins. Okay, so I just got a question that I'm going to read out loud for everyone um, in case they... So for the people watching the live stream, but also the people viewing this as it's um, when it's already been recorded. So the question is, hello, found your tutorials for locomotion for UE5. Has it changed a lot in 5.4? And that's a great question. In some ways it has changed a whole lot, but in other ways it is very much the same. So the biggest change, of course, is probably motion matching being production ready in 5.4. However, if I open up this animation blueprint, it hasn't led to a large change in the sort of nodes I used, except that I've just added two new ones. So this motion matching node can take the place of a sequence player, a sequence evaluator, a blend space, any node you'd place in to get a character pose out without inputting a character pose in beforehand. So this can go in a state machine if you want it to. This can go really anywhere you want it to. It's another tool in a large arsenal of tools. So the topics that I cover in the 5.3, really just Unreal Engine 5 series, it applies to any version 5 to 5.3 and potentially even like 4.27, though I can't speak exactly on uh, what would work and what wouldn't work on that. Um, but anyway, the point is that I'm not sure why I can't think too clearly on this mo at the moment. I apologize. Let me try and organize my thoughts. So the things that I show in that series, like how to get data from the character movement component into the animation graph, or the way that you can bind functions to nodes when they become relevant or when they update, uh, things like distance matching like that is all still relevant and the series is still useful for 5.4 plus but there is a big hole in the series and that i don't cover motion matching and motion matching can enable a lot of new approaches to how we set up locomotion systems so i am planning a motion matching series but if you're in the midst of the previous one you definitely don't need to stop it um what i cover and a lot of it, especially the earlier side of it, before it just gets more into the specifics of the specific locomotion system that I'm creating, there's a whole, there's a lot of general information I tried to pack in that should be that should continue to be useful uh, going forward into whatever updates um, come out for the engine in the future as well. So. We have our look at rotation and I'm just going to break this and get the yaw. So it didn't probably really matter that we normalized that, but that's fine. And this isn't the time for optimization and this isn't anything we'd want to be running uh, during gameplay in a game. This is all just part of the, this is more a development tool than anything else. So we have our yaw. But if we were to just apply this yaw, we would run into issues because we would just immediately snap our yaw. We would immediately add this much yaw to our yaw in a single frame. So we need to break this yaw up over a duration of time. And off the top of my head, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do this, so we're going to figure this out in real time. I've done a lot of similar things before, and it's, I'm sure, a problem that has been solved. So if I have to resort to Google, 
I will do that. But I'm going to start by isolating this functionality from everything else by creating a function. And I'm going to name this function increment rotation. And I know that there are certain things we need to take into account. And I'm going to pause for a moment to take a look at chat because I'm getting a couple of longer messages. So thanks, Icarus. And so to address, I'm going to read this other question out loud. Um, do you think a layer system like Lyra is needed here or with motion matching? Can we get away from layers and do something, or I mean, I'm sorry, do everything in one file? That's another great question. And personally, I'm not a fan of the layered approach in Lyra as much as I used to be when I was first seeing it because it's useful in some ways, but it's tedious in others in that a lot of logic that would be easier to work with is just split off into different animation blueprints and it would be easier to work with it if it was in the same animation blueprint. And so Epic is working on a plugin called Chooser. And I believe it's meant to replace that sort of animation layer exchange approach that was demonstrated in the Lyra starter project. I think that approach was mainly used for performance to allow for quick this quick swapping of animation sets at runtime. And Chooser is the same thing, but on steroids essentially um i haven't used it a lot so i can't speak much to it there is a documentation page that is still lacking in lots of information um but this is was essentially created to handle data driven swapping out of assets at runtime specifically animations and animation databases with motion matching so I'm pretty sure this is what they'll be using with their uh, motion matching sample they'll be releasing a couple of months after 5.4 comes out. And this is definitely going to be the future of swapping out animation sets at runtime. So the animation layer approach isn't bad, but this is going to be what Epic is pushing and it's probably going to be what is best to work with from a performance standpoint and ease of use standpoint. The downside being that there isn't a lot of tutorials or documentation yet. I do plan to make tutorials covering this once I know how to use it well, but I haven't um, implemented, it, implemented it into a full system yet. And that's part of my plan for this motion matching project is to figure out how Chooser works, implement it, get it working so that I can teach it along with motion matching. Okay, so we need some more input variables here. So first off, we know that we'll need a current rotation. I named this increment rotation, but it's we're not taking in a rotator, so I'm going to I'm going to change that and make it more general because this is definitely something that could be used outside of this specific context. And so if I'm doing it on stream here, I'll show how to make, we'll figure out how to make this function together and it can be applied, I'm sure, in many different places. Now I do have uh, functions to do this, like rotation interp2, but the issue is, is that it takes in an interpolation speed float that isn't in like uh, degrees per second. It's um, it's the same sort of interpolation speed as float interp to vector interp to all of these interp to nodes taken in interpolation speed float. And to my knowledge, it's just a value. The higher it is, the faster it'll go, but I don't know the metric and it's isn't the metric that we are looking for. And I haven't looked at the C++ either to uh, understand what that metric is. I've just kind of gotten used to what the different values look like. So we'll need to create our own interpolation, I think. So we have our current rotation. 
we're also going to want to take in a target rotation. And finally, we want to take in a rotation rate. And this will just be, I think, degrees per second. We might as well make this a rotator too. And what we may end up doing is cracking open the source code for Unreal and looking at how the orient to rotation to movement code actually functions in the movement component, which will definitely be uh, quite the task. And it might actually be worth um, looking at. I don't know. No, no, it, it won't be. Because there's going to be a lot of complication around aligning and rotation with velocity, and we're not looking for that. So it'll be... Uh, more time to extract what we would want to look at out of there than it would be worth to find the code and understand it in the first place. And the problem will be a lot simpler um, approaching it this way. So we have a current rotation and a target rotation. And so we want to get the delta between these two. So we'll subtract, I believe it should be the current rotation from the target rotation, and this will give us the delta, the amount of rotation we need to rotate. Um, we need to split this up though. So we're going to want to update, our current rotation is going to be updating each frame, which means this variable is going to be updating each frame. So we don't need to split this up and plan out our rotation multiple frames ahead. We just need to know how far can we rotate this frame based on this rotation rate. So let's say we can rotate 360 degrees a second. Well, we just need to look at the delta time. And so the thing with delta time is that we don't know how long the current frame is going to last, but we know how long the previous frame lasted. And that's usually close enough for the timing to the timing of the current frame to substitute that in and assume that the current frame is going to last about as long. It can introduce a bit of error, but it's as close as we can get when it comes to a game development to knowing how long our current frame is going to last. And so we use the timing of the previous frame for these sorts of operations. So that's going to be another input. Delta. Time. And delta time is just the difference in seconds between the previous frame and the frame before that. And so we can extrap extrapolate forward and assume that the time between the previous frame and this current frame where we're doing our calculation finishing is going to be close enough that to this time that we can use it as a substitute. So We have our desired rotation amount. We have the rate at which we want to rotate and we have our delta time. So there's a general process that we can follow here and I just need to remember what that process is. Which might take me a few moments of thinking and maybe a bit of trial and error as well. But at least on the bright side, you guys can see the process that I go through in trying to figure these sorts of things out. So I'll start with what I do know. We need an output value, which is going to be a rotator. I'll just name it rot out. And we also know we'll need some portion of the delta. So I think we should be able to divide this by the rotation rate. I'm pulling up a calculator to throw some numbers in and see if what's happening makes sense. So 
isn't going to show up for you guys because I'm just streaming the Unreal Engine application currently. But I'm just going to take a desired rotation of 540 and divide it by 360. So that is what I think it is. That's, yeah, distance, rate, and time, that equation, of course. Um, had to rediscover that intuitively myself, but it's uh, that D equals RT. So that gives us a value of 1.5. So we know it'll take us 1.5 seconds to turn 540 degrees if our rotation rate is 360 degrees per second. So our rotation rate is set as a rotator, which means it can be different for each axis of rotation. So I'm going to break our delta rotator into its constituent, its, uh, constituent float parts, as well as our rotation rate. And I do want to let you guys know that if you have been sending any messages in chat, um, the last stream I had like a 10 plus minute increment to where the chat just froze up on me and I didn't see anything coming through. Now you guys might just not be sending stuff and that's perfectly fine. I don't mind that. Um, but just in case anyone is sending stuff while they're watching the stream and I'm not responding, I do try to keep an eye on it and respond. And I'm very weary of YouTube not um, updating me on chat now because that that happened. So I do just want to put that out there early on, relatively early on in this stream. And we're just going to focus on yaw, collapse that into a function, and instantiate that function three times and call it for each axis once we have the logic figured out here. So, we know that we need to take our target rotation and divide it by our rotation rate. So I'm going to call a safe divide. And now I'm going to set a new variable, a new local variable, and I'm going to name it rotation time. And this rotation time is very closely related to delta time. We're in the same unit. We have the total number of seconds. So, Okay, what we're really looking at now is a proportion. So we have um, the proportion of 360. Well, we have it of 540 to 1.5 seconds. And I could be wrong here. I'm just figuring things out as we go and working my th way through the problem. And so we have 540 to 1.5. We have 360 to one. And I know we have these different proportions here and I think just putting them on the screen in front of me will help me to figure out how we can use these effectively. And we have X to Delta time, which we know. So given we did, I don't think we even need 540 to 1.5. We know that we know our current rotation. We know why we have 360 to one is to X to Delta time. And I, gosh, I know that there is a formula I used to know for solving for a proportion. So I'm going to have to Google that formula. which I'm doing on my second screen right now. So the proportion formula can be given as, and I'm just going to create another comment. And I know my formatting for proportions is terrible here. So I apologize for those uh, more familiar with proportions in math than I am. It's been a while since I've looked at proportions specifically uh, mathematically. Uh, let's see. So the formula as... Okay.
So in this case, this is our 360. This is our one. C is our X and D is our delta time. So rotation rate is A. B is our unit of, well, really it's in seconds, which is one. Wait a second, that formula does not look right to me. I think I'm misreading the proportion here. Okay, everyone. So I apologize. I'm just uh, refreshing my brain on the proportions in math. Okay, so here's a solve for x example. Okay, so we're doing it diagonals. That makes sense. That makes lots of sense. So, what we're essentially looking at is rotation rate over one. And I'd normally be drawing this out um, on a notepad or something else, but I'm doing it in comments so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Rotation delta to x to delta time. So this math right here to find how far we can rotate in a second doesn't need to know how far we want to rotate, which makes sense. I did, did have to discover that um, through, through this process here, through this logic, and that does make sense in that we are just, as long as we still have rotation to apply, we rotate. And then at some point, we're going to find a time where the amount of rotation we need to rotate is less than the amount of rotation we can cover within the segment of our delta time. And so that logic is going to come after this math because that could be the first frame. It could be the last frame. It will be the last frame we want to rotate on. And so we're going to want to clamp something, I think. So we'll figure that out when we get to it. But for now, this is just going to be a function to rotate, to apply rotation over delta time. We'll figure out um, where this fits into the larger problem later on. Yeah, it is difficult to find good locomotion animations, especially animations that fit the style and everything that you're going for in your project. If you have the capacity to make the to make good animations in a tool like Cascader, you can definitely go for that. Um, because that'll give you the most control, the most freedom by far. But um, what I'm trying to do in this series is make use of Mojin, which can generate animations given root trajectories, which is useful. But um, I will likely end up making some modifications to the animations. I'm not an animator, so I won't be making stylistic modifications, but I might be making technical modifications like uh, changing the positions of the feet relative to the root bone on curves. So... You could start with a tool like Mojin to get yourself most of the way there and then make some edits using software like Cascader. 
Um, as far as good, technically good animation packs, there is the UUS animation set, which is a strafing animation set. The UUS is up, unarmed upright strafing. It's um, eight directional. It has starts, stops, pivots, all for male strafing movement. And everything can be used in a blend space, which is what sort of sets it apart. The creator of that plugin also has an animation matching suite plugin, which allows for blend spaces to be distance matched. So the starts can be put into a blend space, really two blend spaces. There's reasoning for that. Um, but there is 360 degree coverage in blend spaces. Um, you just have to select which blend space to use each frame. Um, and then you can distance match anywhere within that blend space. So that's a technically really good animation set, but the animations aren't the best visually. Um, it was made by a friend of mine, Ryan, who I'm working with. He's also a moderator in the Dev School Discord. Um, and he's not an animator, but he wanted to create, and he did mocap on himself and created animations that were uh, technically what he wanted for a locomotion system he was working on creating. And he put the pack out on the marketplace. It's good for that, but um, it is what I used in my previous series, but it might not be what you're looking for stylistically. But it is worth checking out in case it does work for you. So we have, okay, rotation rate over one and X over delta time. So here is our proportion, and now we just need to solve for x because we know the three other variables at this point. As well as our constant of 1. So we can do that. Essentially have, um, gosh, what's this example just showed me this formulaically. Okay, so rotation rate multiplied by delta time is equal to one times X. Oh my gosh, that is so obvious. That is so obvious. I should have seen that immediately. Oh my goodness, I am slow today. I uh, <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. Gosh, so it was thinking that I needed the amount of rotation we want to go through. I was thinking we needed that and I was trying to make that fit in initially. And so I just passed up this, which is so obvious. What? Okay. Well, I see it mathematically now, but I should have seen that logically from the beginning. We divide rotation rate. We divide our desired rotation by, we divide rotation rate by Delta time to get how far we can rotate for the current frame. Gosh. Wow. That's obvious. At least should have been obvious to me. I feel like I've done that exact thing so many times before. And I just had to work it out from scratch this time. So we'll break. I don't think we need this rotation time. We'll break rotation rate and safe divide by delta time. Now we can make a rotator. And now this is the this is the maximum amount of rotation that we can apply for the current frame. And we're just going to Okay, so here's what we'll do. We're going to get the minimum. That's not what I was looking for. So this function returns the minimum value of the two. So this is our maximum rotation for the frame. But our delta might be less than that and likely will be because it won't match up perfectly on the last frame we're rotating for. 
So in the case, some cases, this delta is going to be less than our maximum allowed rotation for the frame. So there we go. There's our full function. Much simpler than um, I was worried it would be. So now we can pull that out and we might be able to make it pure. So this is actually giving us a delta here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get, hmm. okay, so we have a delta and it's going to be easier just to pass that delta in. So instead, I'm going to replace target rotation with a delta. I'll actually do a rotation delta. And plug that in directly. For rotation rate. We've set the values accordingly in our character movement component already. So we'll get our movement component. And we'll get our, whoops, not our movement component. We want our character movement. Apparently, I can't type too well today. There we go. Okay, there's our character movement. And from that, we can get our rotation rate. And now I believe I have delta time as a variable already. Yep. So now we'll set actor no, I actually want to add control set can you not set the control rotation directly all right set actor rotation i'll be quite happy if this works on the first try i'm not expecting it to So let's get uh, one of these isolated from the rest. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it, move it over here, and rename it. And I'll grab one of these characters, copy, paste, move over. And I'll set the spline. Where would that be? Should be here somewhere. Oh, I have the spline selected. So we'll set the spline right here. So hard to click these. Uh, I just had it too. Wish these points would get bigger when you get closer instead of staying the same tiny size. There we go. So now the spline holds the settings that we need to have. So I'm going to turn off. Or maybe it's the character. Is it in the spline follow settings of the character? Yes. So use shortest rotation. Hmm. 
let's actually use longest rotation. Okay. Yep, I should have seen that visually. It is automatically doing the shortest rotation. Because we could do a shorter rotation, but then we'd be backwards. Okay. Nice. So this is actually should be the opposite. Use longest rotation. We can reuse our function. That will still apply. We just need to manually calculate this delta a bit differently. So, we need to get the longest rotation between two vectors, which Unreal does not have a function for. So, but if we had the shorter, the shortest rotation, we should be able to get the longest rotation easily. So we have our look at rotation. And so let's imagine we're a situation where we need to turn 135 degrees. So instead of turning 135 degrees, we would turn 100 So we need to turn 135 degrees clockwise. So we'll be turning 185 degrees, not 85, 180. And then we would still need to turn another 45 degrees. So what's the difference there? We could subtract 135 from 180. That'll give us so 180 minus 135 should be 45. Yep. So our look at rotation, we can actually subtract that. And I'm just going to isolate yaw now and rework this because I don't want to deal with the principle applied to all of this. So full rotator in the same way, but I don't want to deal with that right now. And I might not deal with that at all with this implementation. So I'll get a subtract. So 180 degrees minus our shortest rotation is going to give us um, that multiplied by negative one. Okay, so what if we're when it's run a negative 135 degrees? We would need to add that to 180. So we need 180 to be negative or positive. So we need to get the sign. And we need to multiply 180 by the sign. Okay. So now we have the longest yaw. And to test this, I'm just going to get a float interp2. This is going to be our target. Our current rotation is going to be that delta time and interpolation speed. I'll just do four, which is going to be too slow. And we want more precise control over interpolation, but This should be fine. Um, oh, yeah, I set actor rotation directly with the output of increment rotation, but gosh, that 
that was that was why it wasn't working. Of course, there's more steps we need to take. I was a bit too eager. Okay, so we're making a rotator to test this. We need to get our current rotation. So get actor rotation. We're gonna use our roll and pitch. Put that in for yaw. Okay. Let's see what happens. All right. What will really help is printing this value. So I'm saying I'm getting a lot more concurrent viewers. So what we're doing right now is, um, for those of you unfamiliar, is we are, for this project, generating animations with Mojin for motion matching. Um, Mojin can generate locomotion animations on a flat surface given a root trajectory. So we can feed in our own root traje trajectories, and that's what I'm uh, creating by having AI-controlled characters with using AI controllers follow splines in the editor. I record that motion and use that recorded motion as input to Mojin to get animations out. And those animations look like this. Here's an example. So we can then put these all into a database for motion matching. And the animations perfectly match the root of the character, the movement model of Unreal Engine. So acceleration, velocity, breaking distance, all that stuff matches up, which is awesome. So what we're doing, or what I'm doing right now, is working out how to have control over the direction that the character rotates in. So instead of rotating clockwise on a turn like this, 130 157.5 degrees in this case of this very specific spline we want to do the inverse take the longer rotation to induce a spin in the generated animation to get spin coverage so that is the subject of this stream that is funny I go into the explanation as we're up to 21 concurrent viewers and in the midst we drop to seven that is humorous. Okay, so back to what we've been working on. We're printing this. So, yeah, I think we're good to run another test. Uh, I'm going to set that uh, duration to zero. It'll make it much easier to read. That is zero. What the heck? That's weird. Not what I expected, and I really don't know why. We're not in any sort of for loop. So why is it printing that many times? Oh, it's printing for every character in the level. Of course. Okay. That makes this more confusing. So I don't want to delete the level here, or the other characters from the level. I'm just going to copy and see if I can paste into a different level, if that's doable. Okay, cool, it is, it is, nice. Hmm, that's strange. Does not seem to be starting to move.
motion spline isn't set and didn't carry over when I pasted this. That makes some sense. Negative 120. <laughs> Let's figure out what's going wrong and where. Let's first take a look at what the look at rotation is giving us. So let's draw a few debug arrows. We'll get the actor location and that'll be the start. And we're going to add the actor location to the unit vector multiplied by the length that we want. So I'll change this to a float and let's go with 250. That should work well enough. Maybe a thickness of one and a size of eight. I don't know. Line color. Okay. So our rotation, our current rotation, is going to be in this pink color and our target will be it'll be green so the same line start but a different line end and i did not mean to delete that i meant to copy not cut and i'm not being super organized here because we're not keeping most of these nodes these are all mostly here to debug So I think I see the issue. I did not change the color. And I think I might have an idea as to what the issue is. And I'm not going to set the rotation, the rotation now, and we can make these lines thicker. So, okay, so far so good. That is not correct. So let's look at that again, top down. Green line is only travel, you know, half the distance that it should be. So we're also finding the delta and setting that as our target and not adding that delta to the current rotation. Okay. So what's went wrong here? I'm going to simplify this for this case. Okay, so I see. I think I missed a step. I figured this out further in my head, but didn't implement everything I thought I was thinking of in the actual nodes. I think I accidentally forgot a step that I had thought of. So we're subtracting the delta from 180 degrees. And we have to add that to... 180. Gosh, okay. Okay. So in the case where we want to turn 135 degrees, and instead of doing that, we turn 185, 80 plus 45, which would be... Um, Two twenty-five. 
So instead we turn 225 degrees. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to figure out, well, what's the simplest way to get to 225 in a generalized manner? And so we can subtract 45 from 180 and that's going to give us, I'm sorry, it would be 135 from 180 and that would give us our 45, which we add 280 to get the 225 degree desired rotation. But that's only going to be for either clockwise or counterclockwise. So I think if we get the sign of, I mean, the absolute value of the yaw and not care about direction yet. So the absolute 180 minus the absolute plus huh we're just well we're subtracting something from 180 and adding 180 so it'll be different than subtracting 180 and then adding 180 but we could subtract that from 360 Okay, so let's just, maybe this is simpler than I'm making it out to be. I'm not printing the correct thing either. Okay, so this was wrong, but this is a problem too. Our input isn't in the right direction. Okay, that is weird. Well, I'm not going to pay too much attention to the arrows. Okay, gosh, this would be so much easier to look at if it was in code. It's easy to miss obvious uh, steps when you're dealing with so much of this spaghetti in the node graph. I've definitely come to prefer C++ for many things recently. So let's print that look at rotation again. How did delta time get? Oh, no, that's not. Okay, so yeah, let's print the direct look at rotation. Forty. Oh, yeah, I need to stop uh, setting the rotation, which is messing this up. And I'm going to set this to, I'm not sure about the jiggle. There's stuff incorrect with the math right now. And I'm going to figure that out first and then address the jiggling. I'm missing a couple of logical steps here, I think. I just have to figure out what those steps are. It's difficult to tell when everything's all in nodes and blueprints. It's much easier to look at that kind of stuff um, in a code format. So this is turning. Let's set that to 135 degrees. So what I'm expecting to see is the value to turn to 45 degrees. But it's not. So that look at rotation, the two vectors we're looking at aren't correct. That green vector should be aligned with the spline. So it's the input vector that we're recalculating. So instead of using the input, I think what would be better, maybe more accurate, would be we have our target distance. 
we have our current distance along the spline as a variable. So I can get that distance, which is a float, and sample the forward vector of the spline at that distance. So I have a reference to our spline. So I can do get forward vector. Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. get vector at spline point. There we go. So all right, what we need to do is get two of these. Now let's assume, let's assume our current spline point. That's going to simplify this. We might not need to make it more complex than that. I have a variable for that. Let's make this world space. I meant to do get forward vector, not get right vector. Well, I can only get right vector. Okay, that's fine. We can just rotate the vector by negative 90 degrees on the Z axis. And now, okay, so new question. I'm going to read it out loud for everyone. So first off, good evening to you too. Um, so the question is, good evening. Please tell me, as an indie developer, should I learn animated blueprints or wait for the release of 5.4 and master motion matching? What do you think? So... Motion matching works within the same framework as everything else does when it comes to animation blueprints. So they're definitely worth learning because there's going to be things you can combine with motion matching, like orientation warping, stride warping, foot placement, as things you can do with as post-processing on top of control rig, or you could have a state machine. I mean, post-processing on top of motion matching. I misspoke there. Or you could have a state machine with different states and have motion matching in some states, other things in others. It's all part of the same framework. And that framework is definitely worth learning um, along with motion matching or before motion matching, um, however you want to approach it. Motion matching is part of a larger runtime animation system. And so to fully utilize it, it's good to have an understanding of how that larger system works. And you can do that by working on a locomotion system that doesn't use motion matching or trying to figure out one that does. But either way, you'll end up learning this system. So let's see. Okay, let's uh, see if this works. So, so far, so good. Oh, come on. I really feel like I'm missing something obvious at this point. Let's print the spline point index and make sure that's being updated. two. So is that going to be the next point? Okay, so it's at one. Now it's at two. Okay, so instead let's do spline point index minus one. Because this is looking forward at the next point, not at the previous point. We want our the previous point, the one that we've already passed. Because that's what's defining the line, I think. Oh, gosh. Okay. Here's what we do. We let's get location at spline point. Put our previous and our next.
And instead of at points, let's do get location. Let's get location at distance along spline and pass in our distance. Because we don't know, we might be on the last spline point. That might have been our previous spline point. So we want to make sure we're doing this all in world space. And now we can subtract the vectors like this. And normalize. Okay, we should now have our unit vector. What the heck is going on here? Wow, I really thought that was going to work. Hmm. I need to organize this a bit, even though this is all just debugging stuff. This is getting really complicated to look at. I'm gonna make sure we're sampling the correct spine, spline point. So I'm getting a debug sphere. I mean, I'm drawing a debug sphere. Okay. So far so good. Okay, and now there's there's an issue. Did I cross my connections? That's what this looks like. Okay. Yeah. So I think I might be sub just subtracting or I might have just dragged out from the wrong node. Thanks, that is useful. I'm actually trying to manually increment rotation on a frame-by-frame -frame basis the long way around. So if I have a spline that makes a 135-degree turn, I want to rotate 225 degrees counterclockwise to essentially force Mojin into generating a spin animation for me. So that's why I'm I have the movement worked out just fine. It's the rotation that I'm moving on to. Up until now, I was using orient rotation to movement. So that is what I'm focusing on now. I'm trying to get the uh, unit vector between the previous spline point and our current distance along the spline, but would probably be a bit easier would just be to do this. And more accurate. Oh, there's an issue. I did not connect the correct. Oh no. Oh, that's the right connection there. Oh, they, here's a rotator. If I get transform, that really could be uh, what I need. That could be exactly what I need. I wouldn't need to do this manually. So let's do a rotate vector. Uh, 
I need to make this relative to the uh, character. Let's just make a vector of 250, rotate it, and then add it on to the actor location. And that should give us the correct direction. All right, what does this value read directly? So I'm expecting a world space rotator. It's the forward vector. It would just be the rotation angle of the forward vector of the spline at the distance. Yeah, 134.99999, that, that's it, that is right. So that was our desired rotation. Right there. Okay. In world space. So we can use this directly. I'm only interested in the yaw. So I want to make this relative to the character so I can do that by subtracting the character's yaw from the yaw of this rotator. And I'll normalize this to a range of negative 180 to positive 180 by calling a normalized axis function. And so now we have our delta. But we don't need our delta yet, so I'm going to use the world space in as our target. And connect our set actor rotation node. I was thinking that would work. We're getting our current actor. Oh, nope. We're just passing the wrong value in. Dangers of unorganized blueprints. Okay, cool. That works. So now, here's our delta. So let's toss that into our increment increment rotation function but I'm actually going to rename this it's just going to be increment float and then increment flow that's really vague it's it's interp Um, use the naming convention of float interp by rate. So this will be target and we'll calculate the delta. So we have our target. 
a rate, and a delta time, and a return value. So we need a current as well. So our target can be this. And our current can be this. So what were we dividing? Gosh, um, darn, I should have looked at that. Now I have to figure this out again. It's um, the current, the target divided by the, it's the delta of the current and target divided by rate, I think. No, divided by delta time. I don't know. <laughs> well, I do have my stream here, so I'll just uh, back it up and scrub through. So I was inside the finished function. Bar. Okay. Ah. Okay, there we go. I've got it pulled up for myself. So we need the delta of these two. So current and target. So we can just subtract current from target. We're going to run that through a safe divide. Divide that by delta time and get the min of that and our delta. Okay, so now if we, now if we uh, set our rotation, get rid of all these dead hints, So this isn't getting the longest rotation, but if our function works, then we can insert that logic in, in between everything. So why isn't that? Oh. Beautiful. That's exactly what we did not want to happen. Okay. So what's going on here? We're getting the, okay, so this is giving us the amount of rotation, but we're not incrementing it. So we need to take this and we need to add it to our current. Okay, so far so good. Oh, that would just like did an instant jump. Okay, yeah, the math isn't right here. We're not taking our rate into account yet, and we need to be taking that into account. That's a big, that's a big issue. So I did miss something earlier. That's, that's nice to know. Okay. So my um, immediate intuition was right, and I tricked myself into thinking it was wrong, and I must have looked at things incorrectly mathematically. So what do we do here? Hmm. Okay, so... Let's take our rate. So if we're looking at this as a proportion, our delta is to our delta time as uh, 360 is to our rate. So delta time multiplied by our It's um, delta time multiplied by, I'm trying to visualize this proportion in my head. Um, darn, okay, so current 
to, I mean, 360 to uh, 1 is proportional to our target. Well, it's not proportional. Our target over the total amount of time it's going to take. That is the proportion. So I, well, we get, we can get the max amount of time we can rotate by dividing 360 by delta time and applying that. Okay, so it's that's where I went wrong. We're dividing 360, or act more accurately, our rate by delta time, and then getting the min. And that might be uh, what I originally did. And I'm not sure if that's the var the global variable or the local function variable. It doesn't matter, but I'll make sure that that is connected that way anyway. So, so far, so good. Instant jump. What's happening? Oh, I see. Might have to actually be multiplying. Yeah, it's multiply. My bad. Awesome. Okay. There we go, guys. There we go. We did it. There's a delay before it starts to turn. Which we do not want at all. We want that to be instantaneous. So I know what I know what we need to do. Okay, so back in the controller. How do we get into a viewport? So we actually want to get transform distance, trans get transform at distance along spline at um, the distance that cor corresponds with our distance plus our spline follow settings error radius. I set this to like a large value, like 50. Should start turning earlier. Yes, it does. Okay. So then. Get transform. So let's not use distance. And let's get our spline point index looking forward. So get transform at point along spline. But then we're going to rotate too soon. So let's try point minus one like we did before. I think this might work. So get transform <clears throat> get transform at point or at spline point global space okay let's see all right that's fine that's not And we crashed. Okay. I'm restarting the editor now. Probably only be streaming for another uh, 30 minutes or so.
Okay, where were we? All right, we're not too far behind. Let's see and make sure this is working with the delay that it has. Okay, it's not, so we did fall a bit behind. Darn, I just solved that and I don't remember, I moved on like completely to the next problem. So I do not remember what we need to do here or what the issue even is. Just does that jump. We just solved this. Darn it. I hate when that happens. You solve an issue and the editor crashes. Oh, we have to multiply, not divide. I think that is the, I think that's it. Everything else looks right to me. Looks the same as we left it after fixing that initial issue. Yeah, okay. We're not incrementing our distance until the next frame. So we're behind. That's why we're behind. Okay, so this is how I have things set up. So let's get... our actor location, and then we should be able to get the closest point along the spline. I know there's like a closest point on spline function. There we go. Find location closest to world location. And now we can get transform at spline point. And we can get spline point at location. I might have to get distance first. Gosh. Wow. This is convoluted, <laughs> but... We can get there. We can get there. There should be a way to just go directly from this to this, but oh well. We got it. Oh, we can do that. That's easy. That's a bit better. That's a bit better. These all need to be world or we will run into issues. Uh, 
Okay. So let's see if that speeds up the reaction of this character. It did. Way too much. That's funny. Okay. Let's draw a sphere from this. I just want to understand better how far off this, how far behind this distance is. Because it should just be for the previous frame. So I'm surprised that it like takes what feels like at least a quarter second to start rotating. That isn't right. Hmm. That's strange. Didn't update distance until the first point. That's. Yeah. Let's try using. Target point distance. Okay, that works. That works. Okay, cool. Won't work on a curve, but it will work. Or did we need that value? No. All right, so now we have the shortest rotation. So given that, okay, so in the case of 185 degrees, we need to get to 225. So 180, I said 185, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, minus, I'm sorry, 360 minus 180. That's obvious, That's I meant to do 360 minus 135. I have a calculator open, but you guys aren't seeing that. Um, apparently, I can't talk and type. I just said 135 minus 135. I know what I want to actually double check. 360 minus 135 should be 225. Okay, like 10 tries later. Yes, I verified that is correct. So we'll take this shortest rotation and subtract it from 360. I think we're missing a step, but let's see what that does in this case, because it should work in this case. Ah, it's working every frame, so we're continuously rotating 180 degrees. So well, that's how we always spin. Okay. <laughs> so it's working too well because it's choosing to always uh, spin because it's always finding the longest rotation. So if the rotation is greater than some value, we'll subtract 360 maybe. So if this... Hmm. <laughs> Gosh, okay, so if the delta is not nearly equal to zero, so if target minus current, 
move this inside the function and make it a less generalized function. That's probably best because we have the delta there. That'll just make this cleaner. I'm doing this in the wrong spot. Okay. So let's do a select. So if the delta is nearly equal to zero, then we're going to choose our delta. If not, it's 360 degrees minus our delta. So now we should take the longest path once the delta is increased. I think that error tolerance is uh, too low. Five. Let's try five degrees. What the heck? Did I do this backwards? So if it's nearly equal to zero, we choose that. If it's not nearly equal to zero, we choose B. So it should not be nearly equal to zero within five degrees of difference. It should be like 135. Hmm. Huh. Uh, I really do not want to split this apart by like checking when we get to points and knowing that we need to rotate and then rotating and then stopping. Gosh, I could do it that way, but that would be spreading this further throughout the code it might be a bit better that way be able to track where it's at and the rotation more but i'd rather just i feel like i'm so close doing it this way so close does that error tolerance just have to be like a magic value for the turn itself if it does then we'll need to find a different approach yeah yeah it's incrementing but it's not exact and Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. I think. Well, I have an idea on another way to do it, but uh, we really need to track our full desired rotation and then increment it and then be done. Instead of calling this every frame. Okay, let's try this. Um, we're just going to get the minimum. Of the delta. And put in a branch. If the delta is greater than five, let's try five. And we don't need the debug sphere. Okay. So now if we don't even enter into the function unless the delta is greater than five. We just turned the wrong way. We're turning the shortest route. Do we need the delta? We need the delta of the target. 
I know we need to subtract this from the target, not the, uh, all right, so. That goes back there. What? Did I just blank out or did that turn the incorrect way again? It did. Hmm. Gonna make sure this isn't rotating if we're not setting the rotation. That's important. Okay, it's not. That's good. That's intended. So I just want to print something. See when this is true and when this is false. Yeah, I thought I set the duration to zero. I guess I. Oh, it's printing for every character here. So instead of printing, I'll just draw. A debug sphere at the character's location. Okay, it is true. Okay, so that, that is fine. And it should reduce it down to zero eventually. Which it does, it does. We need to multiply that by negative one to change the direction. Wait a second, it's getting the min. Uh, so this, that should be fine. That should be fine. Huh. Okay, so let's, let's get a normal float interp node again. That's gonna find that's finding the shortest distance between two floats. But if we're passing in like full 360 degree rotation, then uh, no, we need to do this manually. I don't know how that node works in depth enough. Darn, okay. It worked initially. That's what gets me. So if we don't do a branch, it should just continue to rotate endlessly. It does. It rotates clockwise. And if I multiply this by negative one, does it rotate counterclockwise? Because this is going to be an important factor. No. 
Okay. Hmm. Okay. So. If I subtract from negative 360. So 360 minus the absolute value of the yaw, I think, multiplied by the sine times negative one, get the opposite sign. I'm half guessing here. Oh, come on. We assume, if we just assume, just do this calculation clockwise or whatever, then multiply this by negative one, then figure out, you know, when we need to multiply by negative one and we don't like the hackiest possible way to do this but at this point I don't care if it works I mean I care I don't care as long as it works I care if it works <laughs> there we go counterclockwise exactly what we want so we can figure out if we need to turn clockwise or counterclockwise by checking if this value is it's negative, we want to turn counterclockwise. And if it's positive, we want to turn clockwise. So we can pass in the sign. This name does not correspond with what this function does, but oh well. So let's get the sign of the target. It's going to be a much cleaner mathematical way to go about this, and I could probably see it clearly if I had it laid out in front of me mathematically or in pseudocode. It's like the big one downside of blueprints is that it's difficult to understand and see everything that way. So that's fine, but if this was now like a... We need to uh, plug our branch back in, I think. This is ridiculously hacky. Ridiculously hacky. But it almost worked. So is the delta greater than zero? If that is true, it should continue rotating. So why did it stop? That's the question now. Almost worked, totally worked. So it's cutting itself a little bit short. So what does this delta look like? Let's print it every frame. This isn't the delta, this is the target. What is this? Here we go, what does this delta look like? And we'll need to clear the other characters out. So um, I'll do that, and then I will not save the level. So it's showing negative 22. Did I do less than? So if it's a negative value, it just doesn't. I bet that's what I did. Okay. 
I, well, greater than either way. That makes sense. I need to use the absolute value. Come on. We were so close. So close. So let's try moving this back into. Hmm. Into our um, node. I don't think this will change it, but it'll be easier to see what's going on to have all this logic put directly together here, I think. Um, this return node should be current. I want this to be exact as it can get, which is why I'm checking if the absolute is more than zero. But I think it just might be passing it up. Because it's always looking for the longest way around. So I put like a five degree in here. Does it never get, I wonder if it never gets, so difficult to watch, that value changes so fast. So let's pause. Slow mo point one and play. We're gonna have to wait three seconds at that. So let's do slow mo one. What is going on here? I don't know why it delayed for so long. Should have a three second delay, which I just put in there to give me time to open the take recorder. Okay, let's watch. So our value is at zero now. Our delta is at zero, which makes sense. So what we should see is either a 135 or a negative 225 I don't know which that's wrong it's turning the wrong way okay so I feel if we can pass a negative 225 into this as the target so 360 I'll hard code some values here. So the three sixty minus the absolute 
multiplied by the sine times negative one really should give us the negative 225. And that's what I'd like to be able to pass into this function is the delta, regardless of how that function works now. Or that shouldn't give me the delta. Okay, that gives me. That gives me the target, but it should be a target of negative 225 to interpolate towards instead of negative 202. So is my math incorrect? Or is this just not 135 degrees? It's not 135 because the project crashed. Okay. That makes sense. So that value makes sense now. And that wasn't, that's not the problem that we're dealing with. So negative 225, awesome. So that should work generally. So now let's just look at this in a interp node, a normal float interp node. I forgot I have the sign input there, so that could be messing with things, and I might need to uh, backtrack some stuff. Zero shouldn't be negative 225, it is. But we keep rotating. So let, let's try something. Let's print, let's print this output. No, that's not gonna help. We're printing our target. And we're always interpolating our current rotation to the target. So it should reach the target and just stay there. That's what I don't understand is why it doesn't stay at the target. We're getting our actor rotation and interpolating it to a new actor rotation. So that negative 225 would be the delta, I guess. Would it be the delta? No, that's the target, because that's not going to change as the character is rotating. So what does our character's yaw look like? We're interpolating. Does this always return at a normalized an axis normalized range of negative 180 to positive 180. Is that the issue here? Yes, okay. Okay. So we need to, oh darn, okay. So that, that makes sense. We're setting the rotation, we're getting the rotation, but it's not getting the variable that we're setting because we're getting a variable that's been normalized. <clears throat> the one time I don't want Unreal to normalize my rotators for me. How do we do this? We should be able to convert back out of that normalized range. If we need to convert out to like an Hmm, gosh. Or can we just... Can we just... Create a variable and set it like this and initialize it upon start with our starting rotation 
That should be doable. And I think that that would work. We do the same. I do the same thing with location. For a similar reason. I mean, not that normalizing, but I just need a starting reference. Then I update it with the actual actor location. I don't update it with something I calculate, but if I calculate it and then use it to set it, it should work out. Let's hope that this works. Issue, I forgot. I want to now get rid of get actor rotation and instead directly utilize this variable. So now we're not normalizing in our actual interpolation. Yes. Okay, we did it. We did it with the float interp node that's that's big so now can we just not connect our sign to anything here and we don't need a branch we don't need more than one return so pure interpolation math i hope holds up in this circumstance so interpolating a float. And I think that is what was throwing us off. No, we're totally connecting in the wrong values of the make rotator. But that's all right. That wasn't affecting anything. All right, guys, it's the moment of truth. Do we rotate counterclockwise? at the correct rate, at the correct time. We we don't we rotate way too early. Let's make sure all the values match. Yeah, I think that connected different nodes. So it probably just said old connections. Okay. Oh, come on now. Come on. We're so close. So darn close. Let's ignore the minimum for the time being. Current minus target multiplied by rate is what this should be. So that math was wrong. I think. Divided by maybe? Divided by rate? Yeah, that, that is what it should have been. How did we lose track of that? How did I lose track of that? We're getting closer. That worked. It was just working too slow. So current target. So we don't need the rate. We need to clamp this. So we have delta, and I'm just going to clamp the float. Hmm. No, I can't clamp directly. So this is the total rotation we need, and we need to divide it by the time it's going to take for the rotation to occur, the delta to occur. Okay, so that would be Do we need to do that? Is that what we need to do? And then divide that by delta time. So current target or multiply that? 
So safe divide. So we need to get the number of seconds this is going to take. We got that earlier. I believe we're, that would be. So 360, we're dividing something by 360. Target by 360. I think so. So 225 divided by 360 is, yeah, that, that feels right. So target, or divided by rate. I am said 360, I'm assuming a rate of 360 degrees per second. So target, safe divide by rate. In this target, we're going to divide the absolute value by rate, not the raw value. Because we need, or we get the absolute value of what we, of what that division results in. Either way, that should work. So now we have the number of seconds. So we divide that by the number of seconds and multiply that by delta time. I'm just operating off of intuition here. I could be wrong. That's I that's how I do most math when it comes to this kind of stuff. I just apply intuition repeatedly until my intuition is correct. What happens if we don't multiply this by delta time? We're looking at distance equals rate. T equals RT. Distance equals rate multiplied by time. So we have distance. We have rate. We have time. So given one rate and time, we're looking for another. Hmm. I feel like this should be obvious to me, but it's not today. So this is our delta. This is the distance we need to travel. If we're dividing it by this is should be giving us our time. So let me I'm going to do a couple test calculations to make sure on my calculator. So our target should be our delta, the absolute of our delta, not the absolute of our target, I think. So let's try that first before I do anything else. I don't continue to spin. Mm. We're not multiplying by delta time, so that's... be the issue. So this is our distance. In doing this, we're dividing our distance by our rate to get our time, which that adds up. That's correct. But now we divide our distance by our time get our rate. So we have our rate and we should just be able to divide that rate by delta time or multiply it by delta time and add, we're not adding that to our current anymore. I lost track of that. Okay. Okay. It works. I was correct. I just lost track of that aspect of it. Well, that's good. I... I was pretty sure I was applying all those concepts correctly. So, all right, all right, guys, it looks like we can now get spin trajectories. That's awesome. That's fantastic. So, what would what does this do on a forty-five degree? I 
I need to figure out how to get this to work on a zero degree, though, unfortunately. So I might have a bit more work to do. But we get we have spins. We don't need a zero degree spin. There's not going to be any circumstance. So okay, now let's do 180 degrees. Because now we have explicit control over our direction. Well, why did that work? What what did I type 180 into? I don't know. Oh well. I'm not saving either of these specifically. So is it just going to be random again here? I think it might be. Because we're just relying on the get rotation. But because we're manually setting the rotation, it doesn't need to be random. We can make this turn right or left. We should be able to force a right or left. All right, well, we can automatically get spins at any angle, I hope. Let's try negative 90. Oh, I typed 180 in, I bet. And then I put that was while it was playing, so it reset because I did the same thing there. So let's do negative 90. We know it works when we need to turn in a positive angle, but do we do a back foot? Awesome. Okay, math checks out. All right, guys, I am going to end out the stream here. I'll probably generate these spin animations um, off stream and between this one and the next and see if I can work on this and push it a bit further in terms of um, setting the direction exactly for each turn point, maybe. That would be interesting. Set it clockwise or counterclockwise, and that might require, you know, more editing of this, and I might just trash half of what I we figured out or I figured out so far today. Um, Definitely took me a bit longer to figure it out than I was intending to, but it works right now. So, yeah, this is going to be, this is, we're not far off from getting the full coverage we need for forward facing jog. Then it's easy. We have all of the, all of the trajectories for forward facing walk. And we can have four full motion match forward facing. And from there, it's off to us uh, strafing, combining them into a cohesive, coherent system and also making any edits to the animations that need to be made to clean them up. From then from there, it's on to tutorial time with the new tutorial series. So that's going to be awesome. So thanks, you, thanks guys, for tuning into the stream, and I'll see you again next week. And next week, I'll actually be doing a joint stream um, with the devs of Mojin. So that'll be something to look forward to make a more detailed announcement on that before that stream. So I'll see you there.